Welcome back guys, this is Logan with West Desert Shooter. Welcome to another episode of Reloading Results. This one's a little bit different because this video is based on the fact that I just went out and picked up a new pound of IMR4895. I have never shot 4895 before. I've watched all the Johnny's Reloading Bench videos and it seems like this purple stuff pops up a lot. I finally found some on the shelf and I decided, you know what, let's pick some up. I know that it's useful in my cartridges. Let's see what this stuff can do. So. I brought it home and I was like, what am I gonna use this with? And I decided to go ahead and load up some rounds in my 223 Remington. So this is my Uinta Precision semi-automatic AR-15. This guy has a 16 inch barrel. It's got a 223 wild chamber with a one to eight twist and a mid-length gas system. While we shot it, we used our Huxworks 762 titanium can out on the end of it. It's a flow through can. Got the MDT sky pod, some Arca rail for that to hold on to. And uh, yeah, we got our Tract Toric uh, Ultra HD. This one's their ELR scope, I believe. So great scope, awesome rifle. This should work out pretty good. At least it should great, serve as a great test platform to see how 4895 does. What bullets did I want to shoot? I had picked up some 22 cal 60 grain VMAX that I had never shot either. I was just picking some up to play with some new bullets, see how that went. I also found some 75 grains that uh, I had shot previously a while back, but hadn't found any in stock for a while. Finally found some, decided to bring some home. And then of course, one of my favorite bullets, the Sierra 69 grain hollow point bow tail. So we got two match bullets and then we got a VMAX, which is a Predator bullet. I happen to have some old CCI small rifle primers out there. Um, these had been sitting in my cabinet for a long time and I was like, you know what, it's time to burn these up. I've been using those Federal AR match rifles uh, quite a lot for the small rifles. So I was like, you know what, let's get rid of these old CCIs. They've been sitting around a few years. Don't want them to, you know, collect humidity or something and go bad. So we loaded up three types of bullets and I did something a little bit different. I chose one powder charge for each bullet and then I shot two five shot groups. So I shot 10 rounds of each bullet with all the same powder. And then on top of that, I used the 10 rounds to collect the velocity average. So there are, we have one average velocity for each bullet, even though we shot two groups. Is that making sense to you guys? All right, so what was the load data on these guys? So starting with a 60 grain VMAX, we loaded those with 24.8 grains of IMR 4895. Uh, overall length was 2.250. 69 grain Sierra, 24 grains of IMR 4895. And then Hornady, that was the 75 grain boat tail, and that is 22.8 grains. Now I'll tell you right now, None of these things are like lightning fast. These were all pretty mild charges. Uh, maybe it's just a 16 inch barrel making the velocity seems a little lower, but overall I, I'm confident we can push them harder. I just wanted to go out and see if it functioned, how it worked. Uh, not really looking to do development here, just overall like, hey, does this powder like overly agree with any of these bullets? Is it just gonna shoot amazing right out of the gate? Let's find out. Now I loaded them up in some old PMC brass that I had previously reloaded or prepped the cases when I had my uh, PSA uh, Palmetto State Armory AR-15. The chamber in this guy holds a tighter headspace spec. It's a little bit uh, shorter headspace than my old PSA was. So the brass prep that I had done back in the day, I bumped that shoulder the right amount for the PSA. It does not agree with this gun. So it, it barely fits. And most of my issues were coming from when I would drop the bolt on a full mag, when it would send it home, it would, uh, it would not go all the way into battery. And then I would get, the hammer would go down, but I think it was just hitting the bolt and uh, was not actually firing uh, the firing pin and getting the primer to ignite. So you're going to see some issues with me. Uh, you're going to see some issues with this gun out on the range that I'm fighting a little bit. That's what that is. The headspace was set wrong for them. I shot through it anyway. Uh, on the rounds that got jammed into the chamber, I did notice that the VMAX had quite a lot of like a smooth circle that had been scratched into the nose of the bullet. I think I loaded these a little too long. I need to check what the Hornady overall length was supposed to be on the 60 grains. I know the 75s and the 69s are 2.250, 2.260, somewhere in there, mag length for the AR-15. But uh, yeah, so I am recording this intro after I've already shot them. So I kind of know what issues I ran into. I just wanted to explain that before you guys see the range footage. Let's go hit the range. Let's see how these things shoot. Uh, you're going to hear me talk through how everything goes. Overall, it was an amazing day out there. The conditions were like a nice 50 to 55 degrees, uh, no wind at all, and it was cloudy. 
It was very strange weather out in the desert, but I was really happy to have it. So let's go check out the range and then we'll come back here and talk about our groups. All right, welcome back friends. My name's Logan with West Desert Shooter. We are out here on the range. All right guys, it's time to start shooting these bolts that we just loaded up. So I just loaded up the Hornady VMAX rounds. These are the 60 grain VMAX over IMR 4895. Very curious how these are gonna shoot. Got a target set up at 100 yards. I don't have a target camera today. Uh, I've got my True Ballistic FX chronograph over here. It's a radar powered chronograph and it's a lot less finicky than the lab radar has been for me. So really excited to see how this thing does. I usually get very good, uh, I usually get really good velocities with this chronograph. I, I really like it. So um, yeah, there we go. If you guys are interested in picking up one of these FX True Ballistic chronographs, Utah Air Guns carries them. So be sure to jump over to their website and check it out. All right, guys, now before we get shooting, I have zeroed the rifle. I took three shots to verify where it was at. Then I made my adjustment, confirmed that I had zeroed it. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and get shooting. Okay, that one went all the way home. Let's see what happens here. Let me check my brass. Primer is nice and round. It does appear that we got a fresh extractor mark on that guy but i haven't shot this gun a ton reloading so i don't know for sure what that's meaning for us first velocity was 2757 and for a 60 grain bullet that seems totally reasonable um yeah we're gonna keep shooting the next round loaded no problem first round seemed to have an issue that was interesting i loaded up 10 rounds of everything we're going to shoot a separate group, but we're going to keep the velocities rolling across 10 rounds. It'll give us a better idea. Wow, that was a nice group. Unfortunately, we ended up with two four-shot groups there, so kind of weird. Hmm. Let's make it two five-shot groups. We're probably going to ruin our second group because it looks really good. Looks like she sent it all the way home on that one. Doesn't appear to have ruined it. Now back to the first group. Well, it sank it right in with the first group, so there we go. Second one looks real good. First one, meh, not so, not so great. All right, so I just loaded up all 10 Sierras into my mag. They're all 10, just gonna feed straight through. I'm gonna shoot two five-shot groups. I'll tell you what, it's really interesting shooting two five-shot groups with the exact same stuff of new stuff you're playing with. Cause that first group I shot with those VMAX, uh, if I were to only have shot that group, I would have been pretty much like, yeah, I don't really care to shoot more of those. But the second group is like, damn, that looks pretty good. When we get back to the bench, I'll show you guys. And uh, you'll have to let me know your thoughts on shooting the same exact stuff. You just shoot it twice. So pretty interesting, but time to get to some Sierra 69 grain match Kings. These guys typically shoot really good out of this gun. So I'm excited to shoot these guys right now. Just making sure she's in battery. I think she is. But overall, uh, on these trips, I remember last year when I was shooting and reloading for you guys, uh, I was really trying to like super preload bipods and stuff. It seemed to just cause more headaches than it was worth. Clear off my chronograph there, that would have been annoying. So yeah, this time I'm just I'm just putting a little bit of preload on it. It's a 223. It's not going anywhere. Just let it recoil into the shoulder, and it seems like rifles respond a lot better to that, at least on this one. So here we go. Got our MK machining bubble level on here, making sure that we are level each shot. MDT sky pot out front. Here we go with the Sierras. First group. I'm gonna start shooting at the bottom, the very tip of the bottom diamond, the top tip of the bottom diamond. Just the way the scope is zeroed, it, uh, those 60 grain VMAXs were landing high. So we're gonna shoot to try and put them in the center of the paper. I can also see that this brass is probably not the correct dimension for this rifle. This was some old prepped stuff that I had from when I very first started reloading. And I think I had had issues previously with that on this gun, where the chamber is just a better, tighter chamber for more precision. And uh, yeah, it's causing us some 
issues here, but when it runs off the gun itself, it seems to send them home just fine. So it's pretty interesting here. All right, top tip, bottom diamond, Sierra 69, H4895, let's go. First shot, 2648, let me check my brass. I can still see the extractor on the side of the brass. Just got a little teeth mark there. Nothing scary. It's a little carboned up from the suppressor. The primer looks fine. So, yeah, I'm not scared to keep shooting these guys. Safe works. One, two, three, okay, that's shot four, right? Shots four, okay, my chronograph's counting for me. Just don't wanna send too many into one group. That's a good looking group, I like it. I am getting Mirage off the suppressor at times, it kinda comes and goes. If just a slightest breeze, maybe one mile an hour, maybe two. That group looks pretty decent too. All right guys, so far H4895 has showed some real promise here and now it's shooting one of my favorite bullets, the Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point. I haven't shot these in a long time. I ran out of them and then I finally picked up a hundred uh, not too long ago. So excited to see how this powder does with it. Um, I don't even know if I've shot this bullet through this gun. So pretty excited to see what happens. 16 inch one to eight twist. It's a mid length gas system. Up top we've got our tracked Toric Ultra HD. 34 millimeter. This is a 4 to 25. This is a really nice piece of glass. I've got another 34 millimeter tract that is the uh, PRS and it looks just like this. So I have to have to check which zoom I've got. But uh, I'm a really big fan of the track stuff. Love the way they actually track. And then the uh, just everything, all the textile functions of it. I love the tracks. I love the way they feel. Really nice stuff. It's only been about five minutes since our last Sierra shot, so the gun hasn't really cooled off. It's still spicy. First shot wasn't quite preloaded how I want. It was good sight picture, good trigger pull, just didn't quite have it in the shoulder enough. See if that makes a see if that matters. Mirage is killing me. My target's dancing. It's hard to aim at something that's moving that isn't actually moving. Okay, first two group close. We're, we're on our right track. We haven't checked our brass either. Let's take a look. Ooh, crap, I didn't pick up all my Sierra, so. All right, so I can only locate one piece and it's got an extractor claw on the side. I think that's because my headspace is wrong. The brass is jammed in the chamber, so it's really ripping it out once it uh, fires. But I don't know where the other piece went. Oh well, my gun hasn't exploded yet, so I think we will be okay to shoot the remaining ones. I just put that center dot on the top of that black diamond and then they all just kind of start blurring together a little bit. And I I don't want to fire unless I know I know where that dot is and so I wiggle it a little bit and have to keep resetting. All right, and there it is for the 223 with H4895. All right guys, overall had a great range trip, was super stoked on that. I really like this rifle. I remember liking it and after this trip, I'm like, man, I really like this gun. Like. I don't think it's ever shot this consistently really awesome on any of my other trips. It's always shot under an inch and done great, but this trip, man, it was sinking them in. Before we went out and shot, I did clean the gun. I cleaned out the BCG and I cleaned out the barrel, just did some patch out on the barrel, did a little simple green on the bolt because shooting suppressed does foul it up pretty quick. So let's talk about the velocities we collected on these three bullets. So again, this is for all 10 shots of each round. So starting with the 60 grain VMAX, uh, 24.8 grains got us an average velocity of 2767 with an SD of 23. Again, with the gas guns, you're just, I've never seen the SDs consistently as low as my bolt guns. Maybe it's just the way I reload. Maybe there's some error in my process. I don't know. The gas system 
leads to higher SDs, basically. Uh, moving on, 69 Sierra grain, 69 grain Sierra, that guy, average velocity, 2614 with an SD of 23, and that was 24 grains of IMR 4895. 75 grain Hornady Boattail Hollow Point, average velocity 2484 with an SD of 21. So like all three of these low 20s SDs, it's not great guys, it's really not. Could you shoot long range with it? Yeah, I have. I've shot at long range with my with this gun with the not so great SDs, but it's kind of part of the shooting the AR-15. I don't really see, I don't seem to see a huge impact down range. Uh, I don't know, it's so easily blown around by the wind at range that it's hard to tell if it's your SDs kicking your ass or if it's just the wind. Typically, it's hard, it's really hard for me to know that at least. Uh, I'm still kind of an average shooter here. And then before I shot those test rounds, I did zero the scope, it came off my six arc and it went onto this 223. And uh, our side in reference here, uh, it was a three shot group, cold clean barrel, went into 0.51 inches. Really stoked on that, like not bad at all. Starting our day cold and clean, three shot group and a half inch. Then I made the correction to zero it out and I was shooting at the top of the top diamond. Here we go, 0.61 inches. Okay, stacking them up. Let's see how the rest of the day goes. So moving over to our VMAX 60 grain first group. So this is our first group. The gun is warmed up a little bit, shot six rounds, zeroed in, it's ready to go. Uh, first time shooting the 60 green VMAX and we fire a five shot group into 0.82 inches at 100 yards. I can't complain about that. That's a solid AR-1500 round group for five shots, 0.82. As it turns out, that's going to be our worst group of the day. Moving on to the next group, same exact load, everything. Just another five shot group, 0.44 inches, stacks them right up. Uh, at this point, the gun is quite warm and we're starting to occasionally see Mirage through the suppressor but uh, really happy with that second group. It looks really good. It's super interesting to me to shoot two groups of the exact same ammo back to back and see the differences that there are. So like if I were to shoot that first round of 60 grain, like it's not an overly pretty group. It's not bad, but it's like, yeah, that, that shot, that did okay. And then you shoot the second one at 0.44 and you're like, damn, this thing was stacking them up. I really like this round. And then you look at both of them and you're like, okay, I'm not mad about that at all. Like, that's a pretty good shooting round. I would definitely load up more of these and continue to shoot them. So moving on to the Sierra 69. Our first group with that, 24 grains, sinks them into a 0.49 inch group. Three of them are touching right up top, the fourth one just outside that, and then the fifth one down low and right. Like, not bad at all. Again, looks good through the scope. I could tell at 100 yards it was a good group. And uh, every time you shoot, you're just hoping not to see a big black dot somewhere far outside of it. And it just didn't open up. That thing sank them in there. This gun likes the Sierra 69, no doubt. The second group, how's it going to back it up? We shoot a 0.6 inch group. So 0.66 inches group. And uh, this one, three across the top, two across the bottom. It's not like an overly pretty group. But again, when you measure it out, it's not bad. I can't be mad about it. This gun is shooting these things. Then it's time to step up to our heaviest bullets of the day, Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point. This is one of my favorite bullets to shoot out of my old PSA. And uh, in this gun, I don't think I've ever shot them through it. So how's it gonna do with the Hornady's? Hornady's, we are shooting 22.8 grains. Again, I'm quite confident we could step up the powder charge here, but our first group fired a 0.71 inch group. So just under three quarters of an inch, not super pretty. They're all kind of, you know, they're all scattered around within that 0.71. Again, like, this is what I would expect from an AR-15. This is what I would expect from a good AR-15. Um, but I, it's so hard for me to switch between like bolt gun mindset and then gas gun mindset. I, I really am happy with that 0.71 inch group. Our second group, let's see how it backs it up with the Hornadies. Does this gun actually like it or is that a fluke? It shoots five shots into 0.49 inches. And uh, two of them went through the same hole. And yeah, great looking five shot group. I am super happy with that. The whole range strip, our worst group was 0.82. We shot three groups into the fours. Like, kicking ass. I'm super stoked on this. Like, I haven't had a great range strip in a long time, and this is one of them. This one got me fired up. I am ready to get back reloading again, load up more of this stuff, load it hotter, 
let's pick out our favorite loads and see how things go. So that's what you can expect coming up soon. But overall, I had a great time out here with my Uinta Precision UPR15. This thing is shooting lights out, so I can't complain at all. I love the scope on the thing. It's one of my absolute favorites, the Tract. I love the gun itself. It's just one of my best looking rifles, in my opinion. I love the way this thing looks. I love that uh, Vortex Shadow Brown on it. So uh, really excited about how the gun shot. And I didn't ever stop and let it completely cool down. I just kind of consistently shot slow fire, shooting groups, you know how it goes. It takes a little while. But uh, yeah, it, the can didn't have a cover on it and I didn't let the barrel cool off. So these were all like warm to hot barrel and uh, still stacking them up at the very end shoots a 0.49 at its hottest. Like you can't be mad about that. Especially when the gun was clean and cold, it still shot a half inch group to start. So like this gun was here to shoot this day and I'm super stoked about it. So you guys will have to let me know. What are your experiences with 4895? Do you guys love it? Do you hate it? Have you found a recipe that works good or bad in your 223 Remington? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. I greatly appreciate your guys' time. I really appreciate it. We will see you guys in the next one.